Hi again, uh, here we are to continue with Phaser, and uh, in this um, video I'd like to cover, you know, collecting the stars. So, so far, um, you know, we've got our game, we've got our character, it moves, we can jump, and, uh, and we're on, you know, keyboard controls. Let's go to the collecting stars section, right? So, um, so what's going to happen here? Well, here we're going to create stars, right? And we'll put a, a row of stars on the screen. And then we'll have to assign some physics properties to check for collisions between the stars and the platforms. And then we'll set up a special collision between the stars and the player. So the stars, when they hit the platform, they should bounce against the platform and hit it like physical objects but when the player hits a star it should disappear right it should be collected right and we can keep track of points or you know do something in the game with that right okay so the first thing we're going to do is this air this little block of code here is what creates the stars okay so i'm going to copy this and then we'll kind of rewrite it a little bit into our updated version right and uh, this is where we create stars. So I'm going to follow the same pattern I did earlier, and I'll go to create, and I'll add a method. This dot, you know, create stars, and then I'll define that method. And now my my game scene class is getting pretty long, so I think I'm going to do this thing where I put a a line in here like this, and I'll say preload. Right? And then everything below here will be preload. And then here, I'll add another line. And then I'll say, you know, create. Okay? And then as I scroll down, um, this will be update. Right? And, uh, and that's everything, right? So, so I just defined this create stars method here, but now I, or I, I called it, but I haven't defined it yet. So I'll go down to the bottom of the create section and I can tell like update is starting here because I can see the comments. So now, you know, as I get more code, it really pays to um, put some comments in to kind of organize my code and make it look good and give me some landmarks so I can easily find my way around. You know, and you make less mistakes this way, right? So um, I'm gonna say create stars. And then I'll take this block of code here that I copied and paste it into the create stars section, right? Um, and then let me format this a little bit so it looks better, right? Um, and we're going to rewrite this a little bit, okay? So first of all, um, when we call this physics.add group, we're going to add another group of physics objects. So in, in Phaser, you can create a single object of some kind, but they also give you the opportunity to add groups because, you know, games in general usually have groups of things. They don't just have one thing, right? So in this case, we're going to add one group of objects. And then this method here, you can see the parentheses, right? Like this is, it, it matches with this one down here. We're giving it an object that has a bunch of options in it. So we, we you know, we say like, let's add a new group. And then I give it a, a an object that has a bunch of keys. And these keys determine like the properties of the group or describe like the options for the particular group. So this one is going to have a key name called star. So we can always talk to it or all the stars by saying star. And then it's going to repeat 11 times. So it's going to make probably 11 stars, right? And then we're going to do this set X, Y. And so this allows us to set the X and Y of a star, right? And we can give an X of 12 and a Y of 0 and a step of 70. So the step X is like the spacing between stars. You know, you could throw a little JavaScript in there and kind of measure the size of the screen to come up with the number. But, you know, um, our screen is about 800 wide, I think, if I recall. And 70 times 11 is um, 770. So this should space all the stars out, you know, 70 pixels apart, essentially. And the, the last one should be, you know, almost to the end of the, the right side of the screen, right? Okay, so, uh, so there's that section. And then this section right here says stars, children, iterate. And so essentially this lets us, like iterate means like loop over 
all the items or all the children of some object. And since this is a group and it's got 11 repeated items in it, you know, this will let us iterate over all 11 of the children, okay? And we give the iterate um, function, we give it a function to execute once for each child, and it gives us that particular child. So the first time through, it'll give us, you know, star number one, and then it'll do the code here, and then it'll give us star number two, and give us the code here, okay? So uh, so let's let's go over this. Oh, it looks like we've got phaser.math, and then it says float between. So this child.set bounce, remember when we did the uh, the bounce on the player, we set like his elasticity and to see how much, you know, how bouncy it was, right? So here, we're gonna give each star kind of a random bounciness, and phaser gives us this special math float between that gives us a random number between this value and this value as a float. So a float is a, a decimal number, right? Okay, so that kind of explains this. Uh, we need to do a couple things here, right? We, get, we have to say like, who owns this variable? Remember, every time you create a variable, you need to define the scope. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say this dot stars. And by doing that, I'm saying stars belongs to an instance of game scene, okay? And uh, when I get down to here, if I said stars, it's not the same as this dot stars, right? So this stars is a global star, stars and it doesn't exist. So we need to say this dot stars again, okay? Um, and then this is all pretty good. I kind of prefer the ES6 style functions for these callbacks. So I'm gonna delete the function keyword. And then over here, I'm gonna use the arrow key, okay? Or not the arrow, but I'm gonna, I said arrow key, but I'm gonna use the equal and the, the angle bracket, right? To, to make the, the fat arrow, right? And that's like, that's a function, okay? That's an ES6 style function. So let's see if that worked and if we have any errors. So I'll go test over here. Oh looks like everything's working, right? So our stars are falling, like gravity's working, but they're not running into the platforms, okay? So we got the stars, and if I refresh, you can see they're spaced evenly out across the platform, or across the, the screen there. Um, I didn't count them, I'm gonna guess there's 11. But uh, now let's set up the physics. So I'm gonna scroll down a little bit, and you can kind of read about groups and this set X and Y here. Um, I'm gonna grab this line right here, that says this dot physics add collider. So remember we did that earlier, we added a collider with the player and the platforms, right? So I'm gonna add a collider for the stars and the platforms, right? So let's put that in our create stars section. So here is the first thing we did is we created the stars as a physics group, then we iterated over the stars to give them each a little bit of a random value for their bounciness. We can't see that yet until they bounce off something, but you'll see that in a moment. And then I'm gonna add one more line in here, this physics world add collider stars and platform. So stars, we have to say who owns it, our class owns it, or our instance of our class. And it our, our class also, or the instance of the class also owns the, the platform. So we put this in front of these two. So let's go back and test it out again. Oh, hey, that's looking pretty good. And you'll notice like the stars are hitting the platform, but they're all bouncing a different amount. So some of them bounce a little higher and some of them don't bounce as much because they got a random, you know, bounciness or bouncy, right? Bounce Y. Okay, so they're, they have a different amount of bounce Y. Okay, so let's do one more thing. So the next thing we wanna do is we want to um, set up a collision between the player and the stars, and this will be a different kind of collision, okay? It'll be a collision where, where when the player hits the star, it won't bump into it, like they won't have a physical interaction, but the star will disappear, okay? Well, it'll be like as if it was collected by the player. So I'm gonna copy this line right here, and we'll put this in the setup for the stars, okay? And this one says, um, you know, it says uh, this physics add overlap. So an overlap is different than a collider. So collider is a physical collision, right? Overlap means that some two things are overlapping, like they're passing through each other, right? And that happens a lot in games, and then things happen when two things overlap, right? And then you can see I have a bunch of variables in here, and I have to say who owns them. So we're going to put this in front of each of these. 
And there we go. Now we got one problem. So this dot player we've defined, this dot stars we've defined, but this dot collect star doesn't exist, right? Okay, so collect star is a function. When you do an overlap, you say one group or one physics body, right? Or a group of physics body, a physics group, right? And then you can say another group or another physics, you know, object, right? And so you're saying like, hey, when these two, you know, overlap, when well, this guy overlaps with this guy, then do something. And the do something is the function that you pass in here as the third parameter, okay? So if we go back to the code here, they give us this function, collect star, and they say just add that. So I'm gonna copy this, right? So I gotta get the whole thing in the curly braces there. And I'm gonna add it, maybe I'll put it underneath create stars, though it's not really in the create section, right? Um, but I'm gonna put it here for now, we can move it later. And um, let's take a look at this function. I'm gonna remove the function keyword and make it a class method. Okay, so this function takes in two parameters. It takes in a player and a star. Now, you'll notice that we used this.stars. That has an S on the end, so it's a different name than this one. But player has the same spelling as this.player. Okay, now here's the thing. The two variables here are parameter variables that are passed into this method by the physics engine. So when the physics engine detects an overlap, it tells us, which player object overlapped and which, with which star, and it gives us the player and the star, okay? So it gives us this guy because it was first here, so it's essentially gonna give us the same reference, right? But we don't have to put this in front of it because it's gonna get passed in from outside. So essentially inside here, player, we can just say, use it like this, and without the keyword this in front of it, um, and it acts as like a local variable inside this function, but we're actually not even using it, okay? So, but it's here. This gives us, you know, when you have an overlap, it tells us what the two objects were. The star right here is one of the stars in the group. So remember, we had 11 stars in the group. This is just one of those stars, okay? So it gives us the one star that happened to overlap the player, you know, at, at any particular frame, right? And then what we do is we say body right and this you know makes the body you know no longer look for collisions and also no longer you know check for you know uh, like overlaps so it won't hit the platform it won't hit the player and it also makes it invisible like it hides it okay so let's save that and then um, now this actually let's take a look at this right so uh, this dot collect star now is calling our class method right, because we define this within the class. So now we can say this.collectStar. And so this is doing what it should now, right? Before we, you know, before we had added this, when when the collision would happen, we'd get an error here. It would say like, hey, collect star doesn't exist, right? So let's save that and we'll we'll go back to our game here and test it, right? So I'm gonna use the arrow keys and I'm gonna try and pick up this, this star right there and get that one. And our hey, our game is working pretty good. Right, there we go. Okay, so I got all the stars. Yay. Um, so anyway, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll continue in the next uh, video.